Your Uncle Bill's a busy man, uh, and you know, he has to take care of you. I gotta, I gotta go to Taiwan on business. <laughs> French! <laughs> Poor kids. They love their Uncle Bill. Tell you what, not traumatized at all. Their parents no. were uh, burnt alive in a car crash. No, no problem, Sam. No. Anyway, the point is, I started thinking about all these uh, horrible shows we were forced oh, no. to watch. Come on. All the cartoons, we, we all these. I, the the, the list goes, the list goes on and on. But the point is, is these shows wouldn't have lasted five minutes. Listen for you and, and I. And and hold on a second. The you know the Brady bunches of the world that mm. everyone waxes poetic about. It's horrible junk. Oh, yeah. Just so much fluff. Oh, not even fluff. Now, you know what it's like? It's like it's like you know what it's like? <laughs> it's like saying candy corn is a good food. Yeah, because, because you, you ate it, it when, you were, when you were nine, yeah, and you're right. like, oh, come on, it's good for oh, I now. love it, I love that. No, it's junk, it yeah, sucks, yeah. it was horrible. That Brady Bunch sucks. You go back and watch a Brady Bunch, there's not a laugh, there's not even a smile in it. I wish people could appreciate the, the sort of vantage point that we have, the idea of the pitch of these shows. Somebody yeah. has to think of these things, think about it, and go in and pitch them to, to <laughs> networks that they yeah. were going to spend millions of dollars producing. I think producing hoped up at the time. I, 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 I got this. Listen, listen. Mm. Just try over here. Mm. I got this great idea. You, you'll love astronaut? it. Astronaut? No, you, no, no. Well, we had, that, that show was great, wasn't it? Mm. The astronauts go back in time, but no. No, what, no, what not got, back in time. Finds a bottle on the beach. Oh, well, that one, that one. Got the genie in it. I think we have, uh, uh, you know, 
I think we have a, a troop. Uh, how, where should we go with this? We do have troops. We do a, you know, we, which True, show you should we pick take? one? I can't but... think of one to do. All but... right, well, don't Let's start to pick. Let's get a nun that flies. <laughs> yeah, about right, the flying a nun, nun. Right, a nun. Uh, uh, this, just bear with me on this. Bear with me on this. It's, Please, it's, it's a nun. It's a Sorry, nun. She has a habit. You know those funny habits? Looks like paper airplanes. Yeah. I bet if she put her head into the well, wind, a certain way, they don't look fly. like paper airplanes. Well, she you, put, just go with me. She put too much starch in her. Okay. All right. Whatever. Well, that's, you understand that's what happened to her habit. The habit hangs down around the neck. Uh, hers was starched. And that's why it... Uh... That's why she flew. Well, they... <laughs> hey, hey, Michelle. Yes. Get on that computer thingy <laughs> and, and and find out why uh, Sally Fields flew in the Flying Nun. It's, she put too much starch in her habit. Yeah, it actually I think created it an airfoil. Okay, I got, I got one for you. You're a lesbian. Yeah, bear with me. It's, world, it's World War II. World War II. Mm -hmm. A concentration camp. Mm -hmm. I, I know. The, uh, it's hysterical, mm -hmm. probably. It's hysterical. Yeah. Is this a drama? Uh, no, no. A comedy. Com mm -hmm. Concentration camp. Comedy. A group of international soldiers mm -hmm. who are being held in a stalag. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're at the whim of this fat guard. <laughs> hysterical, probably. Hysterical. Schultz. And the guard is under the supervision of this crazy commandant. Yeah. It'll be great. Clink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, no, look, how did that even go down? All right, the point is, is none of these shows would have uh, stood a chance in today's market, no doubt about it. But in a way, well, not really. I was going to say it's like comparing yesterday's athletes to today's no, athletes. No, it's no, not that's, fair. That's worthy. No, yeah, that's worthy because they still needed five guys who made the cut for the basketball team. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, now there's just so much competition, so many slots, right. everything's so much better. But here's what I'm saying. Robert Blake trial. Yeah. Now. Blake, as, in, as everyone's still talking about Beretta from the uh, late, mid, late 70s crappy show. Uh, and again, like I said, there's no equivalent to that. The show's 30 years old. You would not know a guy who was on a show 30 years from now because there's 5 million shows. Um, he was found uh, not guilty. And uh, it seemed to be fairly uh, evident that he was guilty, but uh, he was found <laughs> not guilty. And it's the same thing they do with all the court stuff. Same thing with OJ. It's like, well, uh... They did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt the that he was worked. guilty. The system worked. Yeah, we didn't have any hard evidence. I mean, you, you take a trial and you, you get rid of a body or you get rid of a gun or you just don't have any blood spattered on you, uh, you're walking if you have a decent attorney. Oh, people could have heard you talking about killing your wife. People could have people could have uh, had you solicit uh, undercover agents who you thought were you know hitmen to kill your wife. You can do anything you want. You can uh, take a video of yourself talking about wanting to kill your wife. No hard evidence. No hard So it's just speculations. No hard evidence. Which, wow. to me, uh, if you had, you know, if the entire courtroom was gathered out on the curb by the restaurant watching him shoot it, uh, watch him shoot the person, uh, obviously we wouldn't need the whole system. The whole system is to sift through the evidence, which does not in include videotape of the person killing them oftentimes. And oftentimes you don't find... By the find way, that wouldn't be admissible if they had that anyway. Right. You don't find the person has the other person's guts splattered on them and stuff. You have to do a little, you have to hear some evidence, timelines, where the person was, motive, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, we can't really convict anyone unless uh, we actually have gunpowder residue on them and the spatters of the person's blood on them. The fact that they wanted to kill them and left the place and we're in the same place and there's no new killer and the prints are on whatever, doesn't seem to be anything. But here's all I'm saying, Drew. Mm. All I'm saying is, is I've been saying for years now, what about the lie detector? What about it? it? What about it? for a long time. What about the lie detector? We've had this, this lie detector. It works pretty good already. Probably worked. Eh, it's probably 95% of the uh, Earth's populace couldn't really effectively pass this if, in fact, they murdered somebody. Yeah. All right, maybe 90%. Who knows? Let's put the world scientists on this. You talked about it. the Let's functional. You talked about the functional MRI machine. Yeah. We talked yep. about the technology. The technology, in terms of what we've learned about the brain yep. in the last five You're to right. ten years is astronomical. You're it's right. through the roof. Yep. And people do this thing where it's like, uh, whoa, 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 whoa there. Uh, hold on. Hold on a second, Orwell. We can't throw out this tried and true system. We can't throw out the system that has a bunch of guys in Illinois on the uh, death pa on death row. We have to let them all go because a bunch of co college students figured out that none of them were guilty. And O.J. Uh, walks. O.J. and Robert Blake are out. Uh, they they got a tee off time tomorrow at uh, seven thirty at Riviera. We we can't throw this one out. I watch TV. 
Watch TV on a uh, Friday night. Watch those 2020 shows. You'll see some teenagers been locked up for 10 years that didn't do anything or some poor black guy was drifting through town. Uh, I'm taking a good look at our system. I, we seem, seem to be about a coin toss. Uh, if you have money for an attorney and you got enough money to throw at your problem, there's a pretty good chance you're getting out of whatever it is. And conversely... Uh, if you're a junkie and you don't have the money and you get the court appointed, whoever, and uh, maybe you're, you ain't the right color and maybe you're not in the right place, there's a good chance you're going in. Is our system so perfect that uh, it's beyond reproach? I, it doesn't seem good at all. I would much rather have the lie detector in place. And they do that like, first off, they do that thing. It's like, uh, how could we ever possibly uh, replace human beings? Uh, how about a calculator? <laughs> Versus a uh, ninth grader. Right, right. Uh, I, we, we got machines that do stuff a lot better than people all the time. This could just be another one. Yep. And when you think about the jurors, you look at these people, you know, they always interview them, and the chick's got like uh, four different shades of hair, and they're like uh, <laughs> chewing tobacco, and they're like in their 50s, and they're wearing a, wearing a, like a, a Budweiser windbreaker and a Dale Earnhardt button, and you're just, they're going, I just didn't see what, and you think to yourself, would you want this person picking out the restaurant you ate at mm -hmm. tonight? Would you want them picking out the movie you rented? Mm -hmm. How about deciding what you wore that day? Right. How about what music you listened to? Is there anything you would trust this group of people to pick out? How about the frames for your glasses, Drew? But the rest That'd of my be life, awesome. that, that idea. Yeah. Would you want them picking the frames out that you're, for your glasses? You no. look like uh, Swifty Lazar. <laughs> yes, would, would. You, would you want them doing anything? You know what I'm saying? No. No! Let's just get this piece of technology. It already exists. It's been around for 40 or 50 years. Let's just put some final touches on it, get the world scientists together. In five years, it's done. We've tested it, tested it, and tested it. It's 97% uh, effective. What we got now, mm -hmm. 55, 60, mm -hmm. 65, what is it? We don't even know. We don't even know. It doesn't sound so great to me when I look at these things. Boom. Right in and right out. And it's not just murder. You know, Robert Blake, Michael Jackson, whatever. Some guy says he took a slip in a casino. He's suing for damages. We'll find out whether he slipped on, pur mm -hmm. on purpose or not. Boom, right up the detector. And it's just the same, just the same as, the, uh, as the blood alcohol thing. If you don't take it, all right. If you say you're not going to take it, then it's just positive. You're, you're guilty. Yeah. That's, that goes down as a positive. And by the way, in capital offense ones where we're going to put you in the chair, uh, if you don't pass, we'll send you through a couple more times, and then we'll do a little supplemental whatever. Nice. But just for most of the stuff, just pass it through. Would you, wouldn't you be satisfied with that? Yes. And, and if you had this piece of technology that you knew scientists, that the world scientists worked on, and it worked, and Robert Blake went through it, and it's like, up oh, green light, you'd be uh -huh. like, all right. There you go. Well, there you go. Well, we better start. Look, now we have a system where, uh, oh, yeah, Blake's going home. OJ's going home. You guys uh, you guys going to look for the killer? No. Uh, what about the police? You guys you guys going to? No, we're satisfied. But you're satisfied that the guy went home. Yeah, yeah, but we don't, we're not looking for anybody. He was our man. He, he was our man, and uh, he was at home. <laughs> it's like, really? No, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know you have a good lawyer, by the way. Man, do you know you have a good lawyer <coughs> when you get off for murder. It's like, not guilty. All right, I'm going home. And the cops are like, well, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good lawyer. I mean, just think about how good a lawyer you have. That was OJ's thing. I know. Even though he initiated a search. I, he's still looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. He's, 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 moved to the, uh, he's moved to Florida. He's got him tracked down the Everglades. No, all I'm saying is think, just close your eyes and think about how good your goddamn lawyer is when you go home and the cops go home, too. Yeah. Now nah, we're done. There you go. All right, I have a plot summary for The Flying Nun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 1967, uh, the large headgear on the 90-pound Sister Bertelli, Bertelli mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. of the Covens, <laughs> Covenant and Sister Bertrill, I beg Bertrill, your pardon. Bertrill, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Can't read San it really Marcos far away. Or I need something. new glasses. Huh? Puerto Rico. Yeah. Enables her to fly in any stiff breeze. Yeah, See, there's no, they all had nothing. They all have habits like that, Adam. They all yeah. did. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, hers had starch in it. <laughs> <laughs> the starch used to be a big thing, everybody. I don't know where it, what happened to starch. You used to be able to ask for extra starch. There was tons of comedy about guys who got too much starch in their shirts and walked like the Tin Man. 
There was a lot of starch the, humor. The starch, the, the starch it would snap. Would the, the opera singers would snap, would roll up in their face like a blind. What the hell? Yeah. All right, now, Adam, you've been asking for this kind of call. Destiny. We aim to please. Destiny's 21. Hello? Yeah, big boobs. Yep. What's up? Well, you guys were wanting somebody to call with big boobs, so right. here I am. She should be, be on the Blake jury. <laughs> Well, auctioneer, here we it. are. Yeah. Yodeling? She could yodel. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I never imagined it would go like this. <laughs> I, I thought it would be different. Um, what's up? How big are your boobs? 36 double D. 36 double D. All right. How big's the rest of you? Um, I'm 5'5 five five and I weigh 132. Mm hmm. 132, specific. I like that. You believe it. All right. Sound like a knockout. What's going on? Nothing, just listening to your guys' show. All I right. Do it every yeah. night. Yeah, thank you. You have a boyfriend? No. Why not? What a waste. Cause I got to keep my options open, you know? Oh, it's an opportunity cost, Adam. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, what options? Though? Where are you going? What's going uh, on? Oh, well, I work at a massage place right uh -oh. now. Mm. Gee. Mm. What does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? What kind of massage place? I do massages. Hold on, you know, write just, that down. Not nothing like for medical problems or anything. I just work at a massage place. Yeah, so it wouldn't be any kind of uh, medicinal massage. Like you, you're, wait, not a you're, you're not a massage therapist. Are you then? licensed? No. No. You just rub people what? down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where, what do you wear when you give these folks a massage? Just whatever. Hold on a second. Hey, right. wait, 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 let's recap. Works in a massage place. No. Uh, makes, works in a massage place, and no. there she gives massages. Right. And she wears I whatever. I work in a massage place. Yeah. You'd interview me, Drew. I'm sorry. Well, what do you do there? Give massages. What, what do you wear while you're giving these said massages? Just whatever. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I see. Very, very colorful, entertaining picture. Yes. <laughs> you said to call, so I call. Destiny? Yeah. <clears throat> so you just wear your street clothes? Yeah, they. you can just wear whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Why does it matter? Well, because they, they don't have, a, you know, outfits to massage out of. I see. And, wear the white smocks or anything. No, and what? what's your specialty? Do a nice uh, shiatsu or deep tissue? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> All right. This is a pro. Uh, Does she... You want to ask? Wait, is, there, is there any kind of sexual contact involved? No. No? No. What? what ever? Do you, do you get propositioned? Yeah. <laughs> you do? Do you ever date these guys? No. What, what? If, what if a guy said, I will give you $500, but I need a little little help finishing off? Would you help him? No, I don't think so. No? And, and no. What, what kind of place? Is this like in a, in a mini mall? I mean, where is this place? Uh, no, it's it's uh, Potosi, Missouri. Oh, 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 oh Potosi. Not, it's not in mini mall. It's in Potosi. It's in Potosi. <laughs> right, listen, that's better. I thought she was going to say it was out on, on Carter Road or something, you know. <laughs> it's out in Potosi. Yeah. Let me tell you something about Potosi, uh, Missouri. Uh, it's a little out of the way in terms of getting a rub down, but it's worth the drive. For Destiny. No, Destiny. I'm talking about for us. No, no, but I mean to... to oh, to see yes. Destiny, yes. Yeah, I'm just saying Potosi in general is a good place to get a rub down. Of Destiny does great work. Yeah, a lot of people head over the hill to Burke Williams over here on no, uh, Sunset. That's a waste of time. I'm just saying, if you just keep going about another 27 hours hit without Potosi. stopping, <laughs> hit Potosi. Get yourself a nice 50-minute rub down in a sauna, Ask and then it's just a short 30 <laughs> hours back to L.A. Destiny? Yeah. How much do you make? Uh, eight dollars an hour. Eight dollars an hour. This is this is sort um, of the, really I'm just I'm perplexed. This, but this I'm is the equivalent, this is I'm the equivalent of your carpet cleaning. This is the Missouri <sighs> answer to that. How much now do you women. get do you get tips? Um, no, not usually. Wow. I, I I can't I can't for the life of me. I mean I know we're we come from LA where it's like you you know, you get your dog a cuticle push while you're yeah. you know, feng shuiing your junk. Yeah, yeah. Uh in some 
you know, gay guys just slapping you with a hibiscus leaf. But what the hell is going on over here? Eight dollars an hour, no tip. What do the what do your customers what do, what, pay? What do they charge for uh, for massage? Um. Well, usually it's around like fifty bucks for thirty 50. minutes. For thirty. Uh, what? 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 What kind of? What, what other kinds of massages are going on in this place? That's it. You just they you put like a towel around you, and then you do the back and arms and stuff like that. You have a towel around you? Huh? A towel no, around no, you or the customer? No, the customer. The customer. One does. Yeah, yeah. Is this a million dollar baby? <laughs> no. All right. So listen, Destiny. Uh, you got to ask for a raise because if you give someone a massage for half an hour. And, and they they're pay paying a hundred bucks an hour. And no, half an hour. But I'm saying, yeah, I know they give they give fifty bucks and you get four dollars. It's not good. And no tip. They don't tip you. You deserve more. It makes you wonder how this sounds like an ill repute type of operation. It's not licensed. Let, let me ask you something, Destiny. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try to ask some questions to see if I can get to the bottom of this. Is there an Asian broad at the counter? No. No. Do they have one of those uh, lamps? that has the fishing string hanging down and the oil dripping down the side with the uh, fake grapes? No. <laughs> no. Any do, red do, do velvet they tan, anywhere? Do they have tanning booths here? Yeah, place? they do have tanning beds. Ah, tanning ah, booths. I'm onto it. Any, any beads separating any rooms? No. Hey, but is, is, are they all under the same ceiling, just with dividers? No, they're different rooms. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you, you demand a raise, yes? Yes. Yeah, I was just doing it because, you know, I want to go to be a massage therapist so then I just mm -hmm. went there until All I right. do that. All right, baby doll. Well, listen, uh, he, I don't see why someone who's a 5'5", 132 with a double D set <laughs> needs to work at all. <laughs> In my world, we'll, we'll, we'll just put you aside and worship you. <laughs> You know what I love about the people call this show? It's, it, it's, they're all like, they're, they're like game shows. It's like, what's my line? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, um... Would what you do involve tools? <laughs> no. Next. Uh, <clears throat> are you uh, are you someone we may have seen on TV before? No. Next question. Ah, uh, see what she do, Drew. Do you, do you work in a? Do you work outdoors? Sorry, no. We're out of questions. Sorry, flip them all over. That, yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's fun. Makes it fun. Takes a little while. Takes takes like twenty minutes to figure out what people do when they call the show, but it still makes it kind of a game, you know. It's like 20 questions. Yeah. Let me give you guys a, uh, oh, forget it. What? Well, what? let me, let me, remember I, I, I've said this uh, before, that uh, the best person to do for that uh, 20 questions game is uh, Evil Can Evil. Why? Yeah. I never heard that. And then they ended up doing it in the, uh, in a movie. Wow. They ended up doing Ocean's uh, Eleven. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Many years ago, I, I discovered that Evil Knievel was the greatest uh, 20 questions person. 20 questions. You get 20 questions yeah. to, uh, you know, pick out uh, Einstein. Well, or... why is he the greatest? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it goes like this. Uh, is he a celebrity? Yes. Is he a movie star? No. Is he a television person? No. Was he on a sitcom? No. <laughs> is he a singer? <laughs> no. But he's been on TV? Yes. And I would know who he is? Yes. Robert Blake. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't sing? No. Does he dance? No. Is he a musician? No. Newscaster? No. <laughs> yeah, you just keep going. It's no, no, no. And the person's like... Ice skater? No. So, hold on. Not an athlete, not a musician, not an actor, not TV, not a writer. Not, uh, no. And it's like, and they're going, I, and I know this person? I guarantee you know who it is. And that's how you get evil can evil, everybody. Right. All right. Thank you. Bravo. And they ripped it off in Ocean's Eleven. Bravo. Thank you. We'll take ourselves a uh, quick break. Be right back after this. Yeah, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Fun yeah. number 1-800-LOVE-191. Or go ahead, Drew. Hey, I'm looking again for couples tonight who are newly married. We want to, uh, for the television show Discovery Health Channel, if you call in tonight, we'd like to put you on TV dis discussing sexual relationships early in a marriage. Also, looking down, looking for husbands and wives to sit down with me and have sort of a powwow session about yeah. questions about marriage and uh, what happens in your sexual relationship. And then finally, yeah. one mm -hmm. last thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in here at 9 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. 1-800-LOVE-191, uh -huh. taking calls on cheating. If you've had oh. trouble getting through, 
Tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow being the, what's the date today? Mm. 16th. So tomorrow will be the 17th. Mm. Tomorrow the 17th. So those mm. of you hearing this tomorrow, it's actually today. St. Mm. Patrick's Day. Uh, yeah, see. Mm. Oh, St. Mm. Patrick's Day. I'll be at 9 o'clock instead of partying. I'll be here at 9 o'clock taking calls on cheating. Yeah. Let me scream uh, something uh, real quick. Now, everything reminds me of something that makes me angry. Mm. But uh, I don't want to hear these goddamn uh, hangover tips that end with... I've, I've got the best one, Adam. I've got the best one. What? What? What is it, Drew? Pray tell. Don't drink too much. Mm, mm, or wait a minute. On. Don't drink at all. Don't, don't drink that down. Uh, no hangover uh, when uh, you uh, do not uh, drink. Slow down. Don't too much. Okay. Nothing. 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 Nothing worse than that each every year in New Year's, but uh, they do on St. Patrick's. Who's that? Susie Valdez with hangover tips uh, coming after this. And it's like, all right, what is it? Banana up my ass. It's going to be good. Put some potassium pills or eat a sack of flour. What's it going to be this Banana time? Your ass. <laughs> but uh, it's always like, well, uh, you know, eat a, eat, a, eat a nice meal lots and of uh, lots of fluids for every for every drink, for every drink you have. Uh, have yourself a glass of water. And again, of course, the best tip of all, moderation. Uh, hold on, by the way. That's not a tip. That's not a tip because it's like it's like when they do that. Uh, the only uh, the only uh, sure form of birth control abstinence. That's not a form of birth control. That's uh, that's what two year olds do that in their crib. You, you know what I mean? Not the ones who call this show, but th that's not a tip. It's not. Yeah, we have some we have some tips on uh, travel safety. Uh, how how's that go? Stay at home. <laughs> That these are tips? Yes. These aren't tips. You telling me not to do the thing that you're going to give me the tip about is not a tip. It's, it's, it's maybe avoiding. a warning, yeah. but it's avoiding. But it, it's not a tip. No. Hey, what, uh, let me tell you. Why not to get the ultimate gas mileage in your yeah, car? How do you, Adam, how do you do that? Don't drive the car. Oh, that's infinity. Yeah. Infinity gas yeah. mileage. Uh, listen, let's just do, let's, let's distill it all the way down. Kill yourself. <laughs> You want to know how to avoid uh, want to avoid cancer? Avoid everything. Kill yourself. Yeah, you how about hang? Here's a hangover tip. Kill yourself. <laughs> you want to get better mileage? You never drive again. <laughs> Kill yourself. Yeah, you a holes. Of course, you don't drink. You're not going to get hung over. I think. I think just to make the logic consistent, just say don't say kill yourself. It's too active. Say don't be born. Don't be born. There, there you go. go. The ultimate. The ultimate hangover tip: never to be born. You should never hear these words passing my lips. Idiots. I, and by the way, what percentage of time does someone announce they got a nice tip for you that's uh, never a tip? I mean, you know, 80%. 82, 90% yeah. of the time. Does anyone ever give you a tip where you go, hey, there's something? Hey, because guess what? There's not. You because would know you, it. You wouldn't know it. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Now, when I tell you to put a little swatch of Velcro on the back of your cell phone that that's was a tip. Uh, sliding out of your well, sweatpants, that, to be like fair, all kinds of tips on, on this show, tips all the time. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Susan? Hi. You're 18? Now, Susan yeah. is the caller you took at the very end of last night, I believe. What's happening, baby doll? Uh, first of all, I want to say that last night that Nancy girl mm -hmm. didn't sound hot. She sounded like she had a big nose and hairy nipples. Mm. Oh, Not that's attractive. Uh, wow. <laughs> Tell that to Drew Scrotum. <laughs> Drew was very enamored. No, Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Wait, she means the caller. For a oh, the caller. Oh, the caller. Oh, wait, who was in here what? last? We oh, I Elizabeth thought you were talking about Elizabeth. Wait, who is Nancy? Uh, yeah, the sun's uh, mainly just, it's all oh, gases. Oh, her. It's her. burning gas. And she's like, no effing what? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember her. I don't remember. What was the call about? Nancy was the one who called from Seattle, who was 30, wanted to know why she couldn't oh, get she loved you. a she good wanted man. A, she wanted a Jewish guy. Dropped the F-bomb a right, couple right, times. Right, Yeah. Oh, listen. when a radio person's lying, saying they're hot. Yeah, Harry. Uh, well, they're not lying. They they, they actually think believe they're it. Not. Yeah, you can just tell that they're not. Yeah. All right, she, so would, don't... she wouldn't pass my lie detector test. By What's the way, going I mean, on? it wouldn't work would. on her. It, no, it, yeah, it, would, it wouldn't work to, on her because she's yeah. delusional. Right. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. Well, since I was fifteen, I haven't been out of a relationship. Really, I've had like ten or fifteen boyfriends. Yeesh. And the last relationship I had was, I had an affair with this guy. He's 26. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had a girlfriend and a couple kids. Mm. Sounds like a delight. Um, yeah. It sounds horrible, but we were really, really in love. <laughs> and sure. No. Now, no. No. Uh, Susan, no, you weren't. I was in love with him. Okay. Well, that right. I believe. We'll go with that. So now what? But now it's over, and 
I'm really depressed and really like can't even go a day without not without like I can't function. And Why is it over? Are you stalking him? Mm -hmm. No. I mean, sorry, oh. sorry. Oh. Wow. Funny, I just gave my little tale of woe about uh, Nancy dropping the F-bomb twice, and uh, eh, 28 seconds later, Susan dropped the F-bomb. Yeah, she had to ring in with her version. F, no. What? Uh, hell no, not going to cut it? I would just no. I don't understand that. <laughs> but hell no, I understand. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why but no. F, no. F Are you guys still dating? F, no. It's, it's more efficient to say no, really. Mm, get on with the call. Yeah. <sighs> well, at least she had the self-awareness to sort of try to backpedal. She did backtrack yeah. by saying fudge ten minutes later. Well, no, she said, I, mean, yeah. I mean, no, I know. Here's the thing. If you do drop the F-bomb or the S-bomb, you uh, may as well just ride it out. You're going back and making, yeah. turning it into fudge or a shamalama ding-dong doesn't really work. In fact, you know, it's kind of interesting. That kind of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, makes me wonder about what kind of, you know, horrible mm -hmm. stuff was mm -hmm. was uh, mm -hmm. directed her way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As soon as she yeah. transgresses, then says, oh, I, I'm I sorry, didn't sorry. get that, but uh, go ahead, Susan. So, I'm wondering if maybe things that have happened to me in the past has caused uh -oh. me to have this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Wanna, what happened? Like, um, the first guy I ever kissed. No, 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 no before no, that. No. Long before that. Kid, dad. My, my mom's in a mental hospital. There mm. we go. What is she mm. for? What did she do before? What is she in for? Um, schizoaffective disorder. I don't okay. really know a lot about it. Mm. It's pretty heavy. It's, yeah. it's a thought disorder, like schizophrenia, though not with all the prominent hallucinations, and it's a character illness. So uh -huh. There's lots of uh, aggression and mm -hmm. out no. and uh, all kinds Horrifying of Horrifying for a kid. And yeah. uh, what about your dad? Um, my dad remarried. I lived with him, <clears throat> and uh, my stepmom wanted me out so they kicked me out when I turned 18 what was your dad like most of the um, time he was he was not, he's a nice guy I I still have a relationship with him he's just mm -hmm. am of, I right that you know he if you backbone. if you said anything yeah. bad to your mom uh, she would really lash out at you um I guess yeah I mean this oh, sort of you really get along but when you said that F word, and then you were like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was sort of such a profound reaction. Oh, but we have people do that on the show. Right. They just catch it's, themselves. It's, it's felt... I don't want you to hang up on me. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So your dad's an invertebrate like my dad? Yeah. All so right. I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. Pelesipod. Yeah, Pelesipod. Uh, <laughs> no, um, he's, got, he's, he's got no spine. Slenderate. I want to know how, how things like that can have a play in... How I have relationships now and how to break out well, of that pattern because it seems almost self-destructive. And I it, is self it. It, it is self It is self-destructive. It's basically one of the prominent features of the pattern that you're in is that people that are mm, people that are attractive to you are versions of your mom or your dad that were traumatizing to you in childhood. In other words, the things that made your mom sick were things that were horrifying to you as a childhood. The, the sense of horror becomes somehow in our brain when we hit puberty and young adulthood. Those horrible things are converted into sources of attraction. Mm -hmm. And people have theorized many different ways about why that's the case, but I think it's just the fact that our brains do that. And it's uh, thought of as perhaps a way of trying to, un to finish unfinished business. And, mm -hmm. of course, your sense of who you ultimately love was your mom or your dad. And naturally enough that's what love is to you and so that kind of person is very appealing to you and to have to finish something that was so horrible in childhood try to make it right it's very powerful yeah all right well listen you don't sound stupid uh susan but why did this 26 year old guy break up with you or did you break up with him uh we he was we it's like we hated each other but we loved each other oh, yeah. Yeah. we were always fighting and all right you know, all right listen really, Okay. No. Here's he, a, let me translate that. He's he, he liked having sex with you. Right. And you start getting attached. hated, loved him. And interestingly, again, that sense of horror and hate mm. and all that increases your attachment needs. Mm. Human, as humans, we don't run into caves when we get scared. We run to other humans. Mm. And so the person you're going to for those attachment needs is the source of the horror. It really intensifies your need to attach to them. Mm. So you, even though you hated him and all this chaos erupted, 
that made you hold on even tighter to him. And that's why I asked about stalking, because it's right. sort of a setup for a stalking situation. Susan, here's what we need to do. Get some therapy. Don't get pregnant for a while. Perhaps uh, Quite a uh, while. dabble a little lesbianism. Therapy is uh, too expensive. All right, Lesbian's well, do, do something. No, Lesbian. therapy. Oh, therapy too expensive. A lesbian's cheap. Uh. Just find another chick and, uh, you know, off come the gauchos. Uh, cool I don't know what they wear. Here's the point. Susan, uh, you can't afford not to go into therapy, little girl. Uh, all right, then listen to some classical music and take a walk. Okay. Right, just try not to act out. Don't do anything weird to yourself, and don't get pregnant. Another way of looking at this is uh, maybe focus on your education. Don't have any relationships for a few years, so you kind of sort things out. Mm-hmm. Continue seeing the relationship, bad relationships since you were 15. Stop. Uh-huh. All right. Let's, uh... Amber? Yes. 20? Yes. 26-year-old boyfriend won't have sex with you. Dating four months. Only kiss twice. Yeah. And he's 26. 26. You're gay. What? Yeah, it could be gay. gay. What he's kind of gay. what kind of what kind of kissing? With the tongue? Yeah. I mean we kiss a lot, but just with tongue has only been about twice. He's gay. And he's not gay. No, a lot of most women can tell by how a guy kisses whether he's a man of passion. Does he kiss well? Yeah, he does. Does he have any uh moral or religious beliefs that make it such that he wouldn't want to be not that I know him? of, and really? I know his family pretty well. And none of them are like that either. What does he say mm. when you ask him why things aren't moving along? He says he's just not there yet, and it takes him a while to get there. Well, that's mm. true. Yes. All right, let's uh, let's try to break this down. What's he do for a living? Um, he's he works in a hospital. He's an X-ray technician. Uh-huh. Is he on a medication? No. <clears throat> sure. <clears throat> does he have any medical problems? Not that I know of. All right. Let's give a few possible scenarios. Okay. Scenarios. Uh, Number one, gay. Two gay. Three gay. Four gay. (laughs) Five gay. Six gay. Seven gay. Eight gay. Nine gay. Hey, I don't have to keep going, but it goes into one. Many, many, many. 185. Yeah. Well, he's been married. And right. he's been divorced for about a year, and I didn't know if maybe that had something to do with it. No, I'll no. tell you. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. There uh, could be there could be a sexual proclivity thing. Wait, there, no, no, hang on a second. Before you, let's let's just address this one thing. He about, was married before. Yeah, I mean, just is there a scenario that a man can encounter a traumatic experience an adult male can have as a result of being sexual with a woman that would call him off sexuality? Yeah. If, he, if she no. exploded, if she caught on fire, no. is, there, is there anything that could happen? No, I know. That would not w- have him women think of guys uh, like, like they women. think of themselves. Yeah. Like, he had a pretty tough outing with a gal about six months ago. <laughs> that means he's going to, now it's he's vengeance. Down. It's yes. vengeance banging oh, time. God. Now, you get, now you're going to feel the brunt of his anger Absolutely. via his penis. So is, you, is there you, anything? Like is a there anything? Now. A, a, a mourner no. runs through the woman well, while they're having through sex. Your, your passion is starting to bleed through. No, but think about it. Is there any, can you can you even come up with a scenario that would call a guy off the hunt? Guys, if they have a traumatic relationship, are more eager to have sex with the next person they encounter. Angry, yeah. Unless the next person <laughs> they encounter is a couple, you know, four Numbers or five, up. four or five notches down from where they came from, and it's, they're not really that into it. Then they, here's, uh, yeah, they right, shouldn't so, be dating that person. <clears throat> yeah, but what happens is, is what can happen is you're with someone, the love of your life, so when you're very attracted to it and what have you. Him, watch out. <sighs> Shh, deep breath. What happens is, is that thing comes undone. You end up sliding down a few notches in your mind or maybe in reality. Just, just guys, too. Up, you're just desperate. And- you just, yeah, you're, you're, you're looking for a port in a storm. <laughs> you hook up with somebody. Your heart and mind is still with this other person. And the new person is a good four and a half when, the, when an eight and a half went walking out the door. Uh, that, now, that's a scenario where the guy's kind of like, and the guy realizes I ain't going to be around for long. Well, that, that I don't want to set the hook. Right. That is a guy I, I don't want to deal with the fact that I'm attached to this person I don't want to be attached to. I don't want to, yes, they feel like... Or I don't want her attached to me. I feel guilty. It's like, I'm going to rob a, I'm gonna rob a liquor store, but I won't use a gun in case I get caught. It won't be any big deal. Right. It's like, I'm not going to set the hook. Right. I'll be in a relationship. We can go as long as we want. We can see as many movies as we like and eat right. as much Chinese takeout as we but, like. But as long gonna... as I don't screw you, 
We're cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yes. you, I, no complaints. You can't convict me in any court but in the that, land. That, that is somebody. That, that though, you're not seeing that guy every night. <clears throat> that guy's kind of around. No. So you got that guy. Then you got confused sexuality guy. Uh -huh. And then you got guy who is banging around and just has a conscience. Now, not really a conscience, but what I mean is, is there's something going on in Somewhere the sexual else. department with somebody else. He could even have venereal disease or something path. like that, and you're just really not getting the straight story. But again, story. that's another guy. That guy ain't coming over every night. He's no? going to show up once every week or two. Amber? Uh-huh. Which guy could this guy be? Well, I don't think it's the gay thing. All right. I'll go with that. Keep well, going. Um, I really don't know. I mean... Are I you attractive? Yes, and actually the whole thing about her being better, that was that's not it at all because she's not attractive at all, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I look better than she does. All right, and then what about did she break his heart? Did she cheat on him with her Irrelevant. best friend? Yeah, Drew's probably right, but is he really pining for her? Is he longing for her? Or is he still, still seeing her? Is he still seeing her? Is it possible he's seeing her or somebody else? It, it's possible. That's what this is. Then, then this could it. be it, and he could be a decent guy who just uh, doesn't want to set a hook in you when he knows he's still partially in with this old one. Either way, we could uh, we could speculate for another 15 minutes. None of it's and, good. No, that's what we're and I'm saying. We're going oh, to speculate minutes, for okay, another 15 good, minutes. Good. Good. He could be... No. no none you of need, any good to, you need you, to talk to him and figure it out. But here's the thing. You need an answer. Uh, all you broads, you do this all the time, where it's like, he he beats me, and then he cries, and then he makes on my chest. Well, did you ask him to stop? No. Well, did you ask him why he did? Well, no. Go, feel free to ask. No. Or, no, here's what happens. I asked him. Well, what did he say? He wouldn't tell me. He was me. tired. He <laughs> said he was tired. Yeah. No. You need an answer. Hey, not only that. The reason you guys don't ask the questions is you know what the answer is. You're scared of it. That's a good point. So come on. All right. Come ask on. and no answer is not an answer. Right. And you have to not be afraid to hear what the answer might be. This guy has got to be still with that girl. Thank you. And by the way, uh, th this relationship is going on for months and months and doesn't progress for no reason. Uh-uh. Right. Stop trying to make reason. Try to figure out why it happens. Go to the source. All right. We'll take a quick break. Be right back after this. Tell you what, gotta get it on. Ain't no choice but to get it on. Hey, I'm still looking for newlywed couples who are willing to talk to me about their sexual relationships and husbands and wives sit down in a group and talk about it. Yeah. Love line. Yeah. Kim. Yes. 20. Yes. 30 year old boyfriend has bad coke problem. Very bad. Mm. How much coke is he doing a week, let's say? Oh, he can go on coke benches for three days straight. Mm -hmm. That's an average binge. He's probably smoking cocaine then. Yeah, he know he snorts it. Mm, really? Yeah, mm. he snorts it. You sure he's not smoking it? Uh, not that I know of. What's no, he's, he's smoking it. Three-day binges are smoking. What's a gram cost these days? To be honest, I don't know. I hear it's cheap. It's like 30, 40 bucks a gram. Yeah, he's smoking crack. I, gotta I guarantee get, it. I got to get in a Coke. It's cheap. What's the question? It used to be expensive. Like, every time I bring up the fact that I want him to quit, he throws the hugest fit and gets all pissed Sorry, I'm mad at me. He's a drug addict. Mm. What, what, what you, you he's not going to stop because you want him to stop. I know, but... How long have you two been together? Two years. Why are you with another drug addict? I love him. Mm. Didn't she catch the nuance of that question? Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Have you, uh... Is your dad a drug addict? No, nobody in my family is. But you've never alcohol? been with Alcohol? No. My mom used to be an alcoholic, but not anymore. Okay. Oh, okay. That was then when you were a kid and a sponge and absorbing everything, but not anymore. <laughs> to be honest, I never really knew she was. You knew. You feel you know. it. Uh, and I asked why you were involved with another addict or alcoholic. I don't know. I didn't know at the time he was doing it when we first started. Have, you're not answering my question. Well, you're being cryptic, Drew. <laughs> Have you exactly. been involved with other addicts or Oh, no, 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 no. Never? Never. All right. She's 20, give her time. All right, all right. All righty. So here's the uh, thing that uh, I always hear Drew say over and over. Uh, you can basically just lay it down. Either he gets help or uh, you split. Or That's you it. That's all you can do. I've done that a couple times. All right. Well, then well, you, didn't time split. To split. you didn't split, though. No, I didn't. Yeah, you, you lay down the law, but you didn't enforce it. He, he, the only thing that will get him to stop is cumulative loss and or a belief that he's going to die if he continues. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's not, it's not going to stop because of you. It's What's he do? Does he sell something? No, he's huh? a lawyer. Lawyer. Look out. All right. Is he... Uh, You're doing him a great service by How about you help him out by... Uh, oh, to where? The bar? There's a lot of places you could report him. Really? He's getting him caught and... Uh, he'll well, how do you him. report it? What do you mean? Oh, ouch. What do you do? You call the call cops? Call the cops, yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to do anything. I don't even know. Look, I tried calling a 911 a few months ago. It was just I know, put on. I know. It was busy for like I 20 know, minutes, and I, I said, screw it. I, I don't know if you can call the cops for yeah, anything it's anymore. Kim, there's an organization called The Other Bar in uh, uh, Los Angeles. Look up The Other Bar, and they can uh, maybe get a recovering a a a attorney to come talk to them. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called The Other Bar. Wow. So this is uh, attorneys helping other attorneys? Yeah. Hmm. Is there a group where publicists kill publicists? That'd yeah, I gotta awesome give that line. Break. That went off the air. I can't. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, check that out. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah, love line, madam. That's Doctor Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. -er. All right, let's rock. Here we go. Back to the phones we go. Aaron. Hey. What's 17? up, Seventeen. How's it going? Pretty good. Man, I just got to say I love your show, Adam. You're the man. You're the man, Thanks. Adam. Drew, lots of love. <laughs> uh, yeah, to my question, like, I just pierced my lip, like, half an hour ago. I read a lot of things online about it. Like, it might be shifting, and, like, I didn't find anything good on, like, how it can, uh, how to clean it out and stuff. And, like, what could happen mm -hmm. to it if it gets infected and stuff. Dr. Well, it gets you infected. You, in you get a nice staff or a strep, and it uh, heads on over towards your head, and, uh, it you explodes. can die. It's no big yeah. deal. It's awesome. Hey, uh, or flesh eating bacteria, you get a fasciitis, and it'll, it'll advance in a couple minutes. Well, it never minutes. seems to happen, though. Well, what do you do? Hey, do you have something going through your, I mean, your lip right now? fasciitis. No, no. I, what I did was I took a, uh, Adam, you're familiar with these. I took a uh, finishing needle, or finishing, uh, my bad, finishing nail. nail. Yeah. And um, I started that out. Let's call them finish nails. What yeah. size? Uh Crap, it was a half inch. It wasn't too big. It was sort of small. Yeah. And I took a sewing needle and I started that through, and then I just pushed the pin through, or the, uh, uh -huh. the ring. How, how do you figure infection start? Yeah. <laughs> infection uh, fairy? What do you think happens? It makes an what infection. What Adam said. Yeah. All right, well, look. Here. Infections occur when a body part is pierced and the external world gets in. That's what happens. Bacteria gets into the tissue as a result of being open to the outside world. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to happen here. Mm. That's just what's going to happen. And it's going to be awful. Well, is it going to have to happen or might it happen? I, I think it's probably going to happen. Why? Because he used he, a finish he, nail? Yeah, he used a knitting needle. to. Well, what if he it. soaks it in alcohol? Zero. 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 Good, because I never do that. Everyone always says, hey, don't lance that zit with that thing that well, fell off the ground. When you're you lancing know, something that's already loaded with bacteria, and you're, you're again, you're trying to stay within the abscess, not get into the surrounding yeah, tissue. Yeah. That's a little different. I actually use fecal matter as a pin cushion, though. Is that bad? Yeah, I'm not sure it's the greatest. I don't selection. let my pin just roll around in my bathroom drawer. I will use a clump of fecal matter and have them all stuck into it so I can get the different gauges, that's different quite sizes. A, quite a statement. <laughs> Yeah, I have to replace. I gotta say, they'll and, and you only use little pens with little balls on the top too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the yeah. fecal matter little will colored, dry up every balls. couple of weeks, so I have to replace it with the it's fresh. Hard to get, fecal. hard to push the nails through the the, the pins through that, right? The, as it the gets dry. older, yeah, yeah pieces Plus it will cracks, crack off. Fall. Yeah, 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 it's it's yeah, very it's unappealing. And it to loses the eye. its nose. It's it's a yes, bouquet. bouquet. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. No, I'll I'll go ahead and uh, put you know drop a fresh duty in there every uh, 10 to 15 That's days, good. depending on the weather. You know, when it's been cool and moist, uh, the dookie will last a little longer, but during the summer months, oh no, it's once quick. a week. Yeah. Once yeah. a week. Um, Who are we talking to? I don't know, but the point is, is if I lance it, if I got a, an ingrown hair or mm -hmm. zit or something, and I hit it with a, with a pin, no big deal. An ingrown hair that you hit with a pin. Again, you can stir up infection that way. You can. But I am within a infected area if already. If you're just dropping into a cavity, yes, you're within the cavity. So, okay, this is interesting to me. So why, okay, so if you have a zit, let's just say yeah. you got a zit, you just take a pin and you drop it into that pore that if that zit is forming in. you in the outside world, you should be pretty good. Or the inside world. 
but I mean, stay I'm, within that one infected pore. Yes, the pore. You know, if this is the pore. Yeah, this he's, is the he's outside drawing world. What looks here. like a vase. You a stay vase. In there. Yeah, right. You're fine. You drop it right in. Now, if you get outside, now why? Why can't you infect what's already you, infected? Is because, that what's going because on? Because the infection is out here. The infection is out here, and you can stir it up and make the infection sort of keep breeding, get worse, but just by increasing the inflammation. But if, but you, if all you're doing is releasing this, you're yeah. Not, but but if you're bringing bacteria in, but this is already to the pore. This is already infected area. All right. So uh, if you take a part of your body, and that, it's the outside world too. If you, what's the outside world? The, the inside of the pore. Now that it's opened up, or yeah. in general? In general, it's the outside world. All right. So. Uh, but if you push something through, you're going from the outside to the inside. Now, exactly. why why is rubbing alcohol no good, or not effective at all? I, not not worth a damn. I mean, be, it's, it's not as it's not better as, nothing. It's better why than they your, rub than you your, down with it after you get a shot. It's better than your stool infected uh, stool. Uh, not tear you. Feces covered. That's pens. better ideas. Yeah, but uh, it's really not. I, it's, it's you can't rely upon it to sterilize. All right, something. you're saying you can't rely upon it, but still, if you had your choice and someone was going to put something, somebody in somebody is one of your dookie pins or a alcohol sterilized a knitting needle. You go alcohol. Yeah. Okay. You know, I wonder, you know, the people that uh, have the fortitude to pierce themselves, there's a part of me that respects it and goes, yeah. well, I could never do that. that. That person's got something, and then there's a part where I think, oh, they're incredibly effed up. It's, it's both. It's us well, it's usually incredibly effed oh, up. Of course. But still, they can hold their hand steady and push a spear it's, through it's them. Both. Yeah, giving them a little something. Uh, Marie? Hi. You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been dating this guy for a year and a half, and we've been going off and on a lot. Um, mm. And he says that he doesn't want to be with me, but he won't tell me that he doesn't love me and doesn't want anything with me. He kind of well, won't. He, wait, he, he, wait does he, just keeps, he just keeps sleeping with you, what you're he, saying. He does want to be with you? He, he says that he does, and he says that he does, and it's off and on. So. Hang on. He says that he wants to break up, but he keeps sleeping with you. Is that a more accurate way of saying it? Yeah, he keeps All right, that. Him wanting to break up and him sleeping with you are two entirely separate topics. Do you right understand? Back and apologizes and says, "I want to be with you. I want to marry you one day." All this stuff is confusing me. Yeah. Well, then he then he has sex on you, right? Right. And then he wants to take off again. Yeah. Um. Not necessarily right away. Like sometimes I he goes for a double shot. Yeah. Sometimes he's gonna go for a couple hours before he splits out. I nah, just. To, Refractory period. Oh, yeah. He gets back into uh, it. Okay. All right. We don't like this guy. We don't trust this guy. <laughs> What's he do for a living? Uh, he he runs a company. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Again, a vivid picture. Mm. What kind of company? Um, compu computer Computers. parts. Computers? Yeah, computer parts. Computer, computer parts. parts. Yeah. yeah. He makes a good living? Uh, he does okay for himself, yeah. Where uh, Where did you meet him? Did you work for him? I actually applied for a job, and then uh, he hired me, and then agreed when I started dating that I wouldn't work for him anymore. So it, never really it, got that. It's sort of an interesting. Uh, it, I mean, you never, you never, you never actually worked for him. Uh, she applied for a job. She he hired her. Yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> how about I worked for, for a while? Uh, what'd you do? Work with this guy? No, no, not at all. What happened was, is I uh, underwent a. Uh, well, I, I filled out an application <laughs> and went back on a few callbacks. Eventually, I was hired on under his. And, he was my immediate supervisor, and he uh, began uh, banging me uh, when, the vent when they keep the vending machines. But uh, no, <laughs> then I then I agreed to quit. Then, then I went ahead and quit, and he kept banging me. But uh, no, no, I didn't meet him at work. No, that's what you're saying. <laughs> it's interesting. Wow, I like I'm, just going I'm, back to the hiring I'm, process. I'm gonna say, uh, uh, well, not just hiring the job application process. When I left uh, high school. <laughs> In uh, 90, uh, 99, my counselor told me that I had a uh, uh, capacity for doing computer and clerical work. At that point in time, I went ahead and filled out an application for said well, computer few, parts few, company. A few applications, a few companies. And yeah. One hired you, me. you worked for him. Marie? Mm, I haven't worked for him, <laughs> actually. Uh, uh, how, how did you two start, meet? How did you I two went in meet? for an interview, and I was supposed to start, but before I did, I actually met with him one-on-one -on -one and then agreed that I wouldn't work for him, and I haven't. He and, picked you up as in the in the interview and, process. Right. Uh, He's a lovely guy. Even creepier, creepier really. Yeah, it's yeah. weird, yeah. 
All right. Well, yeah. Let's see. He's 27. Um, yeah, I don't like this guy. You just get out of this morning. He's this 27. Is, you're 20. He's, is, not, he's yeah. not really into it. This is what you call a dysfunctional relationship. Get out. you got you got to put a complete moratorium on this guy. Cut him off. You change your phone number if you have to. And every time you lay your eyes on this guy or have a phone conversation with him, know that the clock starts ticking again on your getting over this. And you never ended up getting the job, huh? Marie? Marie? What the hell? I don't know. Did she hang up? Sometimes our phones are screwing. We can't hear people. Marie? No, she hung up. All right. I, I think you, you basically told her a bunch of stuff she didn't really want to hear. I guess. And uh, people don't respond well to that. Is that Cherry? Yeah. Cherry? Yeah. 15? Yeah. What's up? Well, I just wanted to know if a girl loses her virginity to a guy right now, does she get attached than a guy? Mm. You mean as a young person, if you're having sex with somebody, does that mm. make you more attached than maybe you're prepared to be? Yeah. We're going to go with yes. The answer is yes. Hey, it does it at uh, 25 and 28 and 32. <laughs> but it really too. does it at 15, 16, 17. It, Ooh, it, it yeah. Just, yeah. You're not really sort of developmentally prepared no. or it's biologically. Like every, it's like everything. Yeah, the difference more between of an 25 and 15, it's the same with everything. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, as with 15 and 5, if something horrible happens, you at 5. Yeah, then. you lose a parent at 5, you lose a parent at 15, you lose a parent at uh, 25. Uh, all different. All different. Okay. Why? What do you got going? I'm just scared to let go. Of your hymen? Huh? Or of the guy that took your hymen? <laughs> Who do you want to let go of? Well, I don't want to let go of, of, of my boyfriend. You don't, yeah. Are you going to have to let go of him if you don't have sex with him? Well, he's graduating. Oh, he is? Yeah. Where's he going to go? Um, UCLA. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> he's going to go there and... and uh, Sell watches to coeds, right? What's he doing there? He's going to huh? he's going to college there. Yeah. Asian kid. No. Hmm. Now I'm really confused. <laughs> he's a good student. Yeah. All right. He's going away to uh, UCLA. You're in the ninth grade. No, tenth. Tenth. Yeah. Yeah. You're Fifteen. He's going to college. He's seventeen. Is he 17? Yeah. When's he going to be 18? Um, on January. Well, yeah, next of next year. Okay, so he turned 17 just a few months ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, it helps. But now he's not going away to college for another four or five months, right? Yeah. Does he want to break up in the meantime? Um, yeah. Well, I won't let go, but I'm scared of... Is it. he wanting to break up now? Um, no. Well, Terry, you understand why we're confused? <laughs> Do you think he will break up with you if you don't have sex with him? Oh, they're already well, having sex. Oh, are they already having sex? Yeah. 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 Are you already having sex? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were asking if you should or not. No, she's saying I'm too yeah. attached, but I need to let go because he's going away. But then he's not going away. And well, he doesn't want to break up. So why are you breaking up? Yeah, it's not leaving town, really. Is it, is it to break up this over-attachment you've got? You don't want the attachment mm -hmm. to go in further? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to be too attached. Where, oh, uh, where's Daddy? Yeah. Oh, I don't live with him. Shocking. I can't believe that. What happened to him? Where is he? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't even care about him. Mm -mm. You don't really care about it. So this no, guy you really do is, care about, you no. got to sabotage this thing. There yeah, we now we're getting to it. <laughs> no, stay with this guy. He's fine. Yeah, we like him. He's going to UCLA. Where's your dad? Where is he? Um, He's in Twins. Oh, there you go. And you don't see him very often. No, yeah, we do. And you just don't like him? Yeah. Okay, why don't you like him? I don't know. I just, I've never liked him. All righty, then. <laughs> uh... Well, say, uh, listen, in uh, in three years, when you get to junior college, say hi to Engineer Chris. <laughs> All right? Okay. Okay. All right, All right, baby. Stay with the guy, please. Stay with him. Huh? Yeah, I want everyone, when they're, and they're uh, you know, now they're in the 9th, 10th, 11th grade, but they're heading for JC. They'll be there in two, three years. Just make sure you pull uh, Engineer Chris aside and say, hey, uh, three years ago, I was in the 9th grade. Uh, I remember us talking to that a-hole Adam. He said to say hi to you. <laughs> Still taking the same math class. Oh, okay. Amazing. 
Fantastic. What are you, 33? 30, 34. 34. Okay. Mazel tov. Okay. <laughs> no one knows what mazel tov means in junior college. They don't have Jews there, Toro. That's right. You know that? I forgot. They would, except for the problem with the uh, Jewish parents killing themselves. Yeah, they the got rid to go to junior college. Yeah. They had to cut them off. Yeah. No more Jews. Yeah. Even if a Jew wanted to get in, they wouldn't let him in. It's a health issue. Now, here's how you can. You have to get a certificate that says both your parents are dead already. Oh, then they'll let you in. Really? Yeah. If you have one that's alive, they'll kill themselves. Crap, I won't kill themselves out. then? Uh, they'll make attempts on their lives, but often not fall through. You know, it cries for help, like lighting their beard on fire. That's <laughs> how a rabbi kills himself. Or protests a war. That's good. Or, uh, yeah, or, he's, or it means he's eating fondue. Nice. That's a great, it's an awesome religion. Just, uh, let me just say this. Driving, uh, driving out looking at uh, some houses on uh, Sunday driving driving down the uh, Fairfax uh, area there. Saw the uh, Hasidim taking the kids for a walk. Uh, you know, you see the nine-year-olds with the black uh, derby and the peos and the uh, black duster on. Uh, not child abuse? Not a cult? Really? And then I said, uh, you know, people in the car were arguing with me. That That's not child abuse? You just uh, indoctrinate your kid into some uh, fakakta religion that uh, is all nonsense, and then they get picked on all the time at school, so you have to pull them out of school, and you have to send them to a special school where they can only be surrounded by their own people. And uh, then they spend their whole lives, uh, you know, not being able to uh, plug their washing machine in on a Saturday. That's not abuse? And everyone's like, well, that's a religion. I said, okay, let me ask you guys a question. What would you rather, uh, your dad occasionally get drunk and beat, beat on you, or uh, you going to his seat him? Huh? Which one is it? Yeah. What they say. You're goddamn right. You wish your dad would beat on you. You'd be begging your dad to beat up, beat your ass every uh, every month and a half rather than going to these uh, retarded religions that people drag their kids into. Of course. It'd be the best day of your life. You get to you get to play Little League. You get to have your friends at school. You get to go to proms. You get to go to dates. You don't have to be homeschooled. You get to play video games. Oh, on a Saturday, everybody, you get to turn a light bulb on. Awesome. And then uh, here's the trade-off. Once, uh, eh, once every three months, your dad comes home. He had a blowout at work. He's drunk. He's been drinking. He starts smacking on you, screaming uh, for you to put away the toys. Yeah? Or or the lifestyle. Grow that payos out. Get the beard going. Wear the black derby in the middle of summer. What, what do you go for, Drew? Yeah. I, I get beat on. Of course. I was just saying, everyone, please. Enough respect with the religion. Nutty cult religions, all of them. Stop it. Let's, all, all I'm saying is, is let's stop pretending like we care and respect it. It's re these, these, most of these things are ridiculous. If people want to do what they want to do, let them do what they want to do. Just shut up about it. And let's stop being so tolerant. Well, be tolerant, but don't be uh, dishonest. Yeah, the Jews and uh, the Arabs are, are blowing each other up over there. Uh, we can't judge. It's it's all good. It's all good. You know what they're doing? I mean, who are we? We can't judge. I mean, it's fine. I mean, we respect it. It's good. It's a good thing. It's fantastic. Okay. So, it, it, what, what, what day is it, Drew? 17, Wednesday? 16. Wednesday? 17, 17. Oh, it's got to, Well, weekend's coming up. It'll be over. Sure. It'll be over. Yeah. Yeah, no problems. Yeah, uh, trouble in the Middle East? No. Nah. Nah. Yeah, uh, it'll be over by Friday. Friday, sure. Friday or Saturday, latest. Just a little, latest. Little, 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 latest. little trouble. Latest. Latest. It's going to blow right over. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no let's not judge. Every, every, everything's beautiful. Everyone's right. Everyone's a genius. And, and utmost respect for all of you in your nut job religions. It's fantastic with you. And by the way, you're all right. Every one of you is right. You're all going to wherever place you're going to and praying to whoever you're going to. It's all right. Everything's right. Everyone's a winner. It's fantastic. Samantha? Yeah? Oh, you would take that drunken dad beating the crap out of you once a month, any day over going into one of these retarded religions. And I don't care if it's, uh, you know, if it's the Judaism or it's uh, the uh, Shakers or Quakers or... It, it's uh, just... Look, what, what's a cult? What's a cult? Somebody define a cult. But that's uh, one guy to get laid. That's true. Samantha, this is a whole bunch of guys, none of them getting laid. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> Go ahead, Samantha. Um, I was wanting to ask Drew if there was such thing as an addiction to, like, sex and porn. Absolutely. It's one of the most common or rapidly growing populations right now is uh, Internet mm. porn addiction. Mm. Is that you? 
I don't know. I've been wondering that. Well, what do you what do you got? Just, with uh, women, your schedule. Women usually get into sexual addictions through love and intimacy addictions. Mm -mm. So mm -hmm. if you're going to be a porn addict, it's usually going into chat rooms and sort of having sex. What's love and intimacy addictions? It's it's really having the closeness and the relationship part bleeding into the sexual compulsions. Mm -hmm. So you you enter in through chat rooms and that sort of thing mm. and then it kind of goes down the path into the into the more explicit uh -huh. sexuality so, so you want the intim intimacy you want the connection that that that's the door through which you enter mm-hmm mine's the back door i know yeah i know i know that's I, my internet I site know. i know back door all right samantha so what are you doing well like i don't know i just feel like I'm addicted to porn or something. Like, I'll rent them off a TV and record them all the time Ooh. and all kinds of stuff. What's, what's your preference? Everything. <laughs> were you exposed to a lot of these things when you were a kid growing up? Can your preference be everything? Yeah. What's your favorite food? Everything. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite team? All Every, of them? All of them. Everything. Right. I love everything. Samantha, so you like everything. Were you exposed to a lot of porn growing up? Um, no. No. Were you sexually abused growing up? No. Hmm. Sounds disappointed. And do you how do you spend a lot of time and energy with the porn? Yeah, I, I mean, I like watch it all the time, mm. and I'm what married, and I'm more into it than my husband. I figured a guy would be more into it than a girl. Well, they, they tend to be. What do you mean you watch it all the time? What does that mean? Like I don't know. Like every night, I just want to put one in, and I watch them. I don't know. For how long? Till the whole movie's over. I got like three of them on a tape. <laughs> Do same three? No, I have a whole bunch of them. Yeah, share the wealth, baby. Did, did she sounds exactly address. like our caller earlier in the night. Yes, she sounds exactly like the million dollar baby. Yeah. They're Missouri chicks. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> Is that where she's from, million dollar baby? I don't know, but that obviously uh, Hillary Swank was going after that voice. Yeah. No, that's hot. I, you know, Missouri, I picture like a, just a, a raft lashed together with the wreaths. <laughs> <laughs> Someone watch your porn everyone on everyone it. Everyone the Mississippi. Yeah, just pushing off. I'm from Missouri. Uh, you're from Missouri. Oh, yeah. I imagine that. Oh, okay. That's uh, I just I had you from Orange County. Okay, <laughs> Missouri. Well, there you go. Well, now it's all making sense. Uh, <laughs> let me ask this. Are you masturbating? No. When you look at these things. No, I, I'm married, so I use my husband. <laughs> so you use it as sort of a as a way of getting sexually active with your husband? I don't have to, no, <sighs> but I don't know. I'm just, I always want to watch them and then... How long have you been doing I this know, for? How long have you been doing this for? Um, about four years. Hmm. Now, here's what I'm saying. You want to sit there and watch an entire porno movie which some of those scenes can be as long as 17 minutes. Through. Wow. Yeah, for a whole, you know, for a big budget one. Wow. Now, you, you want to watch an entire movie beginning to end, but not necessarily engage in any physical contact, just sit there and watch it all the way through? Well, no, every time I watch it, I do something. I have to, you know, I can just sit there and watch it. and. You do you it know. with your husband, though. So you do what, it with your do, husband. You, do you masturbate? I have before, but usually my husband's here... Right. And he does something to you. Yeah. But then, do you have an orgasm? Yeah. And then, can you move on and you know? Or do you keep watching? Well, I no, I just move on. But then, like later on that day, I'll watch it again. I'll watch one again. Mm-hmm. Do you have kids? I have one. All right. That's uh, it's about a half too many. I was gonna say one too many, but it's, I'm breaking it in half. She got a half. I give you the, yeah, give her like two arms and a part of a forehead and one eye. She's not as bad as our callers that we. No, like she's yeah. not. She's yeah. not. All right, Samantha. This is um, Drew. Stop me if you disagree. Um, some some people uh, are are colossally effed up because of the uh, horrible abuse they've suffered in the past, and some people have like sort of chemical imbalances and that sort of thing, and some people have addiction problems. Samantha is sort of. Her obsession is fueling her obsession. She's sort of uh, declared that this is something I'm into and now obsesses with it. And it's sort of like, uh, it's like it's like when somebody when you get a cut or something and you keep messing yeah. with it and yeah. you're not a cutter, 
Yeah, it reminds me of like like but, an Afghan, a dog that gets a, a cut and the dog keeps chewing on it. Yes. You can't get it to stop. It's like something got yeah. it started. Right. Something happened, and now you've sort of spiraled into it a little bit. I mean, she, it, she's not been sexually abused. She probably was physically abused, so there's got to be some trauma there. But it's not the usual situation for sexual addiction. It's not having consequences. It's just sort of a bothersome habit. Literally, it's like a habit for her. Yeah, and she's labeling it as an addiction when maybe it really is an addiction. I although don't think it's it becoming is. a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and, now she's making it. And really, an and so what? They use this as a marital aid. Big deal. All right, Samantha. Yeah. We've uh, labeled you as uh, not as effed up as you've uh, labeled yourself. So <laughs> we you, would you, like you. You have difficulty containing your impulses clearly. Yeah. And you're a little obsessional. We would we would like you to be busy. Take some control yes. over your life. Uh, focus on your marriage and focus on your child and whatever your hobbies are and whatever else you have, making your home, doing your work, whatever you do. And go, hold your watch, go ahead and watch <clears throat> your porn at night with your husband. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but let's let's limit it to three nights a week. No, li no, no, no. Limit it to until you orgasm mm -hmm. and then you go to bed. Then you got to shut it off. Then you shut it off. Right. That's all. Just uh, cut it down a little bit here. All, all right. right. Okay. It's all right. Ratchet all right. it in right. just You'll a little. Right. You, you're all right. Okay. All right, baby doll. Although Fine. I definitely want her for my uh, television program to talk about marital couples. As you got to tell people they're sane. Yeah. Well, that's just exactly. a lot of porn. All right. Again, I'm still looking for uh, newlyweds and husbands and wives to sit down with me on television and talk about their experiences. We're all, uh, all in. All right. Take a little break. Be right back after this. Yeah. Oh. Love line. Um, Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191er. And I need you married couples to get off your butts and call in here. We got a whole bunch of newlyweds, but no husbands and wives. Just want to sit down and talk about what it's like, what the sexual relationship becomes like after you've been married a little while. Is it mm -hmm. changed? Is it not? What's it like? What's your stressors? And then we're going to do that for the Discovery Health Channel. And I'll be taking calls tomorrow night, the 17th that we decided, Michelle, that is, mm -hmm. starting at 8 30 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, to talk about cheating before mm. before the actual love line calls heat up. Mm. So mm. there's a part of me that says, uh, "What the hell's he doing talking about another show on our show?" And there's a part of me that says, "Nah, he's talking. Who cares? I'll just tune out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. What time is it? We gotta get out of here." <laughs> uh, You're so appreciative when I talk. I am. It's like uh, that's good. The um, I've uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I've, I I I I long. You know the people. People, I don't think, understand something, Must which is, like, I watch America. Things. I don't understand a lot of things, but I, I watch American Idol. Yeah. And, you know, the difference between what Paula Abdul does, or any of the judges do, do but especially Paula Abdul, because she doesn't really say anything, <laughs> and uh, what, like, Ryan Seacrest has to do is, is mountainous. Yes. And people don't really, it's like, oh, they all star in the show. As a matter of fact, we like him better than we like him. No. Yeah. You know, when you're Ryan Seacrest and... Uh, He's an easy guy to make fun of. He does a good job, I oh, think. He's spinning he's the confident. plates. Yeah. First off, you got to remember uh, the name of 12 people, and then you have to sort of recap, and you have to do, we're taking the vote, and uh, here's what's happening, and you guys phoned in, and here's the phone number. Here's some conversation blah, going, blah, rhythm, blah, blah, what are blah, we going blah, in, blah, what are we going blah. out. Yeah, Paul Abdul's like, I think you did good. Huh. And then Simon jumps in. Yeah. I, I mean, a long sentence for her is, you You know, got it, honey. Yeah, no, no, no a, lo a long-winded one for her is this. The song started off slow, but you got into yeah, it, and so right. I liked it. That, right. That's about it, and right. that's only every ten minutes they just come to her, and no one complains, and there's nothing to do. You just sit there. TV sucks most of the time because there's some teleprompter, some car, and you're always worried. Uh, did I give the phone number out? Did I get the guy's name right? Who's oh, wait? Who's stand, who's to my right? Who's to my left? What's going on? Uh, nothing better than judging. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the great, greatest gig of my life was at uh, New Star Search. I just sat there between, uh, like, Reba Did McIntyre you have to even say anything? and Ben Stein. And I was like, yeah, they were like, uh, could you keep it to uh, eight or ten seconds? Oh, right, I was like, right. how about I do three seconds? You still give me it. ten grand, right? Uh, it was good. Not great, but good. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, by the way, genius. <laughs> Guy's a genius. Needs his own show. <sighs> ah, nothing better. I want a job where I judge. So um, here's what I was uh, thinking about. I don't know why, but I uh, polished off a uh, box of Girl Scout cookies uh, today. Huh? People, um, a lot, of, lot of arguments. Okay. Well, I like Thin the... Thin uh, No. Savannah's? No, no. 
Yeah. Keep Peanut going. Butter. Keep going. Thank that's, you. That's the Savannah. Yes. No, no. That's that's tag, tag alongs. Yes. They're called tag alongs. Shut Thanks. up! Thanks, sweetie P. Tag alongs uh, much better. Used to be called the Savannahs, right? I don't know. Maybe back in the day. Here's my point. There is, and I did go to a car dealership once that just had the uh, tree foils, uh, trefoils yeah. or whatever. It's just it's white, shortbread, just right. regular cookie. Sugar. And I thought, uh, I remember I was just sitting there like a waiting room. Like, you want some Girl Scout cookies? Oh, yeah, great. When you get the peanut butter or the mint. Look, nah, I got these. What is that? That's ah, the white ones. Uh, those are the ones that are just lard and sugar. Yeah, yeah. What They're Girl, Girl Scout cookies. And I thought, well, why would you, or, you know, now I'm getting angry and upset. Again. What? What? <laughs> Why would you get those? I just, you know, girls get a box of Girl Scout cookies. But you don't want to get the peanut butter ones or the mint ones or uh, how about the Samoas? Uh, yeah, the I, I don't. coconut and chocolate ones. Samoas. Look, I realize a lot of people are just more animal than human being. Like, you know, if a dog, you know, if a raccoon breaks into your cabin, it's not going for the tagalongs. It's going for the box. It he's, doesn't matter what's in the box. See what I'm saying? He's going for the first box. He sees. First box. Yeah. Only box. First box. Doesn't first box matter. He smells. Yeah. yeah. And and I realize a lot of people are just like. The guy was sort of confused. He was like, I got Girl Scout cookies. You want them or not? I was like, those are the... Yeah, what? Who? Uh, I know. How low does your self-esteem have to be that you just get the plain sort of vanilla lardy ones that taste like shortbread? Really, not, like un, like anything you could get anywhere. Why would you do it? Now, Drew, not you. Not a man of passion. No. No. We're going for the thin mints. Yeah, thin mints is... Uh, Thin mints, solid. Yeah. Solid. Frozen thin mints. Solid. Solid. But the tagalongs. Oh, yeah. That's got the peanut butter and the chocolate. That is oh, ooh, yeah. rock solid. That's Sears type of, type oh, of solid. Oh, those are those things with the, the little lumps with peanut butter. Yeah. yeah bite yeah, yeah. through the chocolate. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You've yeah, got yeah, you, you yeah, to dig yeah. through the chocolate yeah. to get to, to the peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard to argue with oh, that. I got to get some of those. Megan? Shut yeah. up, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Megan? Megan? Yes. Yes, What's I'm up? here. 21. Speaking of Orange County, Megan is from New York. This is what somebody sounds like from Orange County as opposed to Missouri. Yeah, from Missouri. What's up? No, not from Missouri. Adam, I loved your comments earlier about our system. I fully agree with you. What our system? Feeling. What system? You were talking about our, uh, oh, God. Oh, our, oh judicial <laughs> system. system. With the lie detector test. Oh, at the beginning of the show, yes. Yes, okay. who wouldn't agree with my was lie this detector? Show or the last show? <laughs> Feels like it was a few shows ago, <laughs> but... Yeah, the system we have uh, has uh, Blake and OJ playing golf together. Why why not get my lie detector in place? Yeah. And let me say this. Uh, now you got me fired up. But my uh, my lie detector, which uh, we could work on, work out, and be very easy. All the guys who were, by the way, all the people that were supposed to, you know, have their cases reviewed and, you know, uh, brought out and all that stuff, or going out on parole, whatever. We, we passed everyone through everything. But here's the thing. My lie detector does not know what color you are. Right. It doesn't know your economic background. It doesn't. It doesn't care. It doesn't. I think it that's doesn't, what people don't like. It doesn't need yeah. anything. It doesn't know about. It doesn't know about your sexual well, proclivity. I think that what, what they're worried about is being discriminated against. But really, the motivation for not doing something like this is they're afraid of not being able to be an exception. Right. It doesn't matter if you yeah. uh, look like Pierce Brosnan or huh. an ogre. Huh. It doesn't know. It doesn't care. It doesn't know. You could you could be black as coal with three hundred gold teeth and a uh, F the LAPD tattoo on your forehead, and either you pass it or you don't. Nice, solid, huh? Yeah. Please, and they call me a racist. <laughs> Megan. Yeah, I'm here. Twenty one. Here we go. Okay, I have been with my boyfriend for about nine months. We have a great relationship, friends for years, and mm -hmm. we're really happy. Talks about marriage might happen, not right now. But mm -hmm. um, I have been having these dreams every night. I'll wake up, go back to bed, have another one about sex. I have sex with people, even girls I know sometimes in my dreams, guys I know sometimes, sometimes mm -hmm. just people. Like every night. I saw online at Starbucks that morning. Well, now you know yeah. what it's like to be a, a male. That's what males do all the time. Yeah. I kind of like it, but on the other hand, it's scaring me. Because I'm wondering, yeah. even because he's laying in bed with me, and I wake up and go, oh, like, almost like he can... She's dropped that F-bomber. Uh, I mean, S-bomb. S-bomb, S-bomb. <sighs> what, what, it, 
Yeah, again, on one hand, I'm sort of complimented that uh, they feel comfortable enough to just drop the S and the F word in the middle yeah, of the conversation. It's like, it's like how I, your old lady feels when you drop your first uh, your fart. gas bomb yeah, in front yeah, of her. Yeah, well, yeah. he's it comfortable. Means, this means it's for real. He's comfortable. He's into me. Yeah, this is long term now. Start and then on the other hand, ring he, shopping. she wants to retch. He just blew a biscuit. We can start looking at rings tomorrow. <laughs> I want to vomit on huh? him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really should think that way, ladies. When he cocks that leg up and lets one fly, that, that means that it's time to start looking at wedding dresses. Particularly when he makes that, that the truck horns. <laughs> <laughs> Pull down with the arm. Yeah. <laughs> Megan uh, dropped the S-bomb, so we gotta, we got to hold her off for a second. Drew, let me ask you this. Um, uh, if, as a guy, you have these crazy sexual dreams yes, all the time, means all the, nothing. means nothing. And we usually tell people, ah, don't worry about your dreams. It's just, you know. That's what they're there for. Right. But as a woman who's having these types of dreams that we normally would almost reserve for males, yeah. occasionally a woman, but if a woman's having them constantly, does this mean more than it does for a male? If a uh, male would mean nothing. If, if it's a shift, if it's a change, it makes me worry about some, or think about something biological going on, medication, ovarian cysts. Now what tumors. about just an attitudinal shift, though? Nah. Not in, you know, I think so. thinking about other guys, work, been uh -uh. friends for a long time. Now, no. all of a sudden, marriage has come up, no, feeling she's, she's hemmed thinking, in a little I bit. I don't think so. She's thinking about men and women, and it's just pure sexual. Megan? Yes. Any new medication, birth control pills? Um, I got off the shot about six months ago, and now I'm on the lowest uh, birth control pill that you can have. Well, maybe that's it. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, are you, are, you're talking about marriage with this guy? Yeah, we've talked about it, and it's. I'm happy with it. I mean, we won't do it for a few years. I'm still young, so we. And you've been with him for how? You said nine. You've been friends with him for a long time. Yeah, for a couple of years, so we're close. You know, and we you really you, know each other bef well. Before you dropped the S bomb, you said you'd wake up next to him and what? Think that and he I gets... would. I would think, oh no, almost like I. I felt guilty for having the dream. Are, no, are, no, are, tell are him you, about him. He'll he'll let you know how you, unguilty you should feel. Are you thoroughly <laughs> attracted to him? Yes, I I love him. I mean, our mm, sex life I hasn't said been thorough, that I said, lately. Yeah, I said thoroughly attracted, not did you love him. Yes, I'm thoroughly attracted to him. All right, what's wrong with the sex life? Uh, he's been really stressed out with work. I'm trying to do work in school full-time yeah. both. So right. I think we're, I we're honestly... Letting it go. I, All right, we don't care. That's fine. Uh, again, another thing, that, it makes me think, you know, bipolar patients can do this when they get more manic -y. They'll start having crazy dreams like this. Well, Birth control pills, medication can do this. Uh, yeah. preg pregnancy can do this. Also, people can hit little patches, and it builds on yeah. the last one. You're thinking as you're going to bed, uh, wow, the night before I had this crazy, sexy dream. I wonder if that's going to, and then that just leads, carries you into and the next night. they've clearly not been very attentive to one another. April? Yes. 26? Yes, I'm 26 years old. What's up? Um, I've been friends with this guy for like 10 years. Um, I met him when he was a freshman in high school, and I was a sophomore. And now I'm 26, he's 25, and we've both um, got out of pretty rocky relationships just recently, and we started having a friends with benefits relationship. Mm -hmm. And... For some reason, um, I have this feeling in my heart that he might be the one. Oh, <laughs> oh well, you know, it <laughs> does it then. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel it. I, you got to write a song how. first. First, you need to write a song. I mean, oh, it's like, some poetry. We're fabulous in bed. Okay, I mean, well, there. I've never I'm going to. More comfortable with a guy. Put a check by that box. Here's the problem, April. Uh, he's your friend, he's not your lover. Uh, yeah, but she has a feeling in her heart. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, we're friends with benefits. Yeah, I understand. But the reason you're not further along is because he doesn't have the feeling in his heart. Not yet. No. I mean, we, we dated twice in high school, and it ended badly. And it's been a very, very long time since we've even considered it. And he's no, no, not, not even not considering not a since, relationship. Not since right? we've, he's, not, he's not even considering a relationship. Not Stay since, with that thought. Not since we've considered it. Since he's, since considered. he's considered it. You've thought about it many times. Yes. Thank he's you. not going to do it. Hey, look, it's awesome to turn the uh, 
I, I wish I could do the we thing too with everything. We're deciding whether I get the job. Yeah, we're, you, you we're, and the boss are going to decide yeah, we're going to get a raise. We are going to decide if I get the raise. Yeah, that supermodel and I are deciding uh, whether I get a BJ from her. <laughs> we're 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 put, we're doing a little soul searching, put our minds together. Do you think how grandiose and distorted that kind of thinking is. You know, you're you're going to make the decision. Your decision making bleeds into the other person's brain and makes it on their behalf too. Yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt and I are deciding whether we're going out dirt bike riding this yeah. weekend. Why not? I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're deciding. About we're giving it some thought. I'm still on the fence. Brad's pretty gung ho. Yeah, wee 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 mm-hmm. or he 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 or me me me. Wow, heavy. That was heavy. <laughs> heavy. April. Yes. That was so heavy that the uh, engineer's Michelle uh, her head. Her cans came flying her, off. Her habits she, she almost flew. She fell off her stool. <laughs> All right. Uh, look, uh, I'm worried, and this is why the Friends with Benefits thing, uh, which has been sort of... Friends with Benefits is almost like, uh, oh, yeah, I got a got a uh, female trapped inside a male's body. It's somehow been accepted in the right. last 10 Friends years. Friends with Benefits is a catastrophe. It doesn't work for it, the it, chicks. It, listen, even for some of the guys sometimes, it, look, it looks great on paper. I was at the University of Maryland. I said, yeah, you, you, Friends with Benefits looks great on paper, right? We're friends. We love each other. And we have sex. Too. Uh, no big deal. Yeah. Communism looks good on paper. Right. It's the same principle. Doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work with humans. Yeah. So do you think I should give an ultimatum or... I, I think... I think and I don't think there's anything well, wrong with putting... Here, here's what... I don't think there's anything wrong with not putting the screws to the person, but saying, uh, I have feelings for I'm you attached, yeah. that are getting a little past the friends with benefits label. I need to know if you're having those feelings for me, because if you're not, I need to move on because this is becoming uncomfortable. And that's fine. And he has to be able to answer it. But don't and put the screws to him so he can't answer it honestly. Right. you got to put it very gently. Give him a chance. Give him plenty of space to answer honestly and then accept what he says. And don't get, don't buy into that, well, let me pump on it. <laughs> I'm just going to pump you for a while and think about it. I'll do some soul searching while I'm on top of you. Let me pump on it. <laughs> That's a good way to go. I like to pump on it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I, you know, things get a lot clearer after a good pumping. You know, that's the way I am. All right. And at the end, what's your, what's your answer now, honey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's take a. Uh, let me hear David Allen Greer. Yes. Yes. I just want to hear what David Allen Greer sexually sounds like, Anderson. Do you he doesn't like that? people looking. Don't. At him. don't <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look like people at looking me. at him. I will <laughs> give you something to smile about. I, oh, I, oh, I, <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> it's always funny. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah! Love line, man. It's Dr. Drew. True. How about uh, we keep a rocking? Huh? Let's rock. Here we go. I want to talk to Lucy. So right. I don't hold too long. Lucy. Yeah. Sixteen. Yeah. You use meth every day. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that well, seems that's, bad. That's, that's probably, uh, in terms of addictive drugs, mm. it's one of the ones we worry about the most these days. It causes something called excitotoxicity, where it. The, the the chemicals that the uh-huh. brain uses to communicate amongst cells. Uh-oh. Uh, I think you lost it. Let's just say they get loose inside the cell and turn into free radicals and destroy the cells as a mm. result of amphetamine use. So you get brain destruction. So this is a really serious problem. Lucy. Yeah? How long have you been doing meth? For like a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah. You're, you're only 16. Yeah. Well, let me just say this, Lucy. You know, I'm, uh, I'm an atheist, and I don't care, so I can speak freely. <clears throat> this is, uh, and I don't mind people that do drugs, and uh, will do the occasional drug myself now and again. Meth is uh, the worst of all the drugs, in my humble opinion. It really is bad. And you don't hear me making a big deal if some guy's smoking weed or uh, drinking a beer. Uh, or e- even, uh, e- I don't even feel this strongly about Coke or heroin. Meth is horrible. And it is ugly. And it, things, uh, 
I mean, people physically, it's sort of, it's sort of ugly spiritually and physically uh, ugly. Yeah. And uh, you need to get yourself some help because it's, it's just going to be bad just, times. Just bad times. It's the next few years are going to be a mess. And, and he's not saying switch to another drug either because that's mm -hmm. uh, the only other way you can deal with this. Hold on, that's what I'm saying. saying. No, saying. No, you, you need to get some help, Lucy. Is there anyone you can talk to? Well, my friends wanted to put me in rehab. Um, That's where you need to go. Right now, but like I told them, I was an addict and all this stuff. That's mm -hmm. where you need to go. Talk to your friends. Talk. Find your smartest friend and talk to uh, her about it. Have them take you to the to a place. It's not, it's, you know, it's not for punishments. You go into treatment. It's to help you get better. No, no. His speed is is horrible. Let me just address uh, Lily real quick. Lily. Hey, um, 21, yes. You don't yeah, like me like, making fun of junior college people. No, I'm so, like, I get so, me and my friend both here, we always get, we listen to you guys, and we get so pissed off when you bag on junior colleges, because the thing is, is that, hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he said I can't say what I said, but I think I can, because you guys are still talking to me. But anyways, I went to a junior college, and so did he, and we're both at the University of Davis, California now. Mm -hmm. University and of Davis. Mm. Yes, UC and we're Davis. both really right. good Not students. University All right. Davis. And I thought it's called UC Davis. Is, it is the University of California Davis. She said yes, University, University of Davis. Yes, California Davis. Oh, okay. The thing is, right. the school is what you make it. And no matter what school you go to, it's totally what you make it. And junior colleges are not bad. They're total funnel schools, and they give people a chance to make it. Oh, so yeah, they funnel you to, to hell into an abyss where you never graduate. That funnel. By the way, school is not just what you make it. It's your competition and your uh, faculty. Otherwise, there would be no difference among schools. It, but Drew, it's what you make it. <laughs> Everything's what you make it. Uh, if you make prison into uh, Neverland, it's fine. It's what you make it. Here's what I want to say very quickly. Uh, yeah, there are a handful of people that go there, study hard, and then transfer. That's the minority. Then there's Engineer Chris and the majority who are in the 30s and they actually need this. They need their bubble burst so they can move out and go do something. You go to a junior college because you're a bad student in high school, and uh, the uh, four months you took off for summer usually don't uh, transform you into the world's greatest student. That's all I'm saying. There you go. Be realistic. Join the military. So you're saying, yeah, find some training, some odd job training, some other work. I, I, a tough love. I do it for you guys, kiddies. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. Well, that's it, everyone. I want to thank you very much for tuning in tonight. And until next time, this is Adam Carla for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The, 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 the opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.